Hi loves and welcome back to my channel. Today we're getting into the 10 least used bags in my collection. It's not necessarily that I don't like these bags, it's just the ones that I don't reach for that often and I'm gonna go through why I don't reach for them, go through some pros and cons. Maybe this will be helpful if you're deciding on this style, if it's really worth it for you or not and if maybe you would reach for it more than I would. Even if I thought the bag was for me and even if I still think it's for me, why I'm not getting that good use out of it like I thought I would. By the way, if you're new here, hi, my name is Morgan. I make videos about luxury handbags, fashion, and lifestyle. So if that's your thing, please subscribe and turn on notifications. I upload once a week and I would love to have you here. Let's get into my 10 least used bags in my collection. The first bag I'm gonna talk about is probably the most special bag I have in my collection, but it is the least used probably out of all of my bags. And that is my Python multicolored YSL cape bag. This is partially the thing about buying Python or an exotic. It's not meant to be an everyday bag. It's quite delicate. You have to take care of it. I don't think people really understand how much work it is to take care of a Python bag and having it look this good. After so many years, I bought this bag in 2016. Typically when you see a python bag, especially with a curve at the top, when you're opening and closing, that will cause lifting of the scales here. So the more you use it, the more lifting you're probably going to have, especially on the back as well. If you're not careful about the fabrics that you wear with it, it can rub against the scales and cause lifting. I have some videos that I've mentioned care for my python bag. I'll link one of them above here. It's just one of those that if you are gonna buy it, you already need to have an established collection. All your base is covered and this is just pulled out for those most special occasions where you want a show-stopping piece. The second least used bag in my collection is my Gucci Super Mini Dionysus. Now this really has to do with a lifestyle change. When I bought this bag, I was going out more. It was pre-Rona by a few years. And I got good use out of it when I first got it. I think if you have a lifestyle where you're going out a lot or you have a lot of occasions, this is a fantastic bag. It does not fit a phone and it's made of velvet so it's not meant to be an everyday bag. Thing to consider when buying your bags is the fabrics that you're looking at. Velvet is definitely very delicate. So if you're going to buy a velvet bag, you're buying it for occasional use. That's something you need to really have in your mind. Like your cost per wear is not gonna be fabulous, but I felt that the Gucci one was a good way to go because it's much, much less than buying like a Chanel velvet bag. If you are gonna add velvet to your collection, a little bag like this for evenings is a great way to do it. This is something that is so timeless that I know I will get use out of it, you know, throughout the year. So even though I'm not using it frequently, something that can stay in my collection and serve its purpose like throughout my life. And it's also one that I'm very happy at the price point that I stayed at for this bag. When I bought this, I got it duty free and it was around 600 something dollars. So it really wasn't a huge investment compared to something like a Chanel. Don't make it one of your priciest bags that you've ever invested in and you really want to use to death. Like that is not your velvet bag. Third bag on my list is my Chanel Trendy CC in the pink. Now I use my black one all the time. It gets such good use. The scratches show less on it and I'm much less afraid to wear a black lambskin bag than I am a light pink one where a tiny scratch is gonna show. I do have a scratch on it here. I don't know if it's gonna come up on camera or not. It is just quite a delicate bag and I love it. I'm never getting rid of it. It's staying in my collection. I think it's so beautiful. If you're looking at cost per wear alone, black is the way to go. If you do want a lambskin bag that's in a color, going small is better than bigger. Those that I've just accepted that I'm afraid of it and I wanna keep it looking as nice as long as I can. So it just doesn't get as much use as I would want it to. Fourth bag on my list is my Gucci Horsefit 1955. This is the Ken Scott collaboration. So that is an artist who they collaborated with. So it's like the Gucci print, but in his kind of way of doing it. And I love that. You guys know I love an artist collaboration. I really look more for artists collaborating with designers more than I do designers collaborating with designers because I think that gives artists a different platform and a different audience to express themselves. But I wish they would have done this bag in the bigger size. If you're gonna go for this bag, I would say go for a size up. This is the mini size. It can fit enough, but it's a little bit of a faff because 
you have to put everything up and down so like my mini pochette has to go up and down my phone you know goes up and down my wallet is smaller and only goes up about this much so if I put something on top and I take my wallet out then that thing drops to the bottom and it's hard to get my wallet back in so it's kind of like playing Tetris when you're getting in and out of this bag if you're not minimal in what you carry. I would say for me, I would personally prefer to have the larger size and I think I would get amazing use out of it. That wasn't an option for this collection. As far as I know, it wasn't available in the store when I went. I don't believe that they made the bigger size in this color. I think the bigger size was only in the black background with the same florals, but it doesn't get as much use as I wish it would because of its size. Fifth bag on my list is my Cambone Tote from Chanel. I bought this pre-loved. I will link that video up here. At the time, I was able to snag this in perfect condition under $1,000. I'm pretty sure that the price has gone up pre-loved since then. It's a discontinued style. This is a bag that when I was starting my handbag journey back in high school, this was before, you know, Instagram, bought a black and white version online from a website that said they were all authentic. But now looking back on it, I'm pretty sure it was not. So I got rid of that bag and I wanted to make sure I had an authentic one because it was my everyday bag in high school. I loved that bag. You know, I didn't know how to care for it so it probably had color transfer all over and got beaten up and bruised and I just used it to death. But this one is just so special in terms of memory that I know it's real. It came from Fashion File. They sell authentic pre-love bags and the condition I got it in, it was pretty much box kept. It was perfect like there's not a scratch on it but it's really something in my collection that's just there for like collectors purposes and the memories that this other bag that I used to have holds. Next bag on my list is probably going to change the camera lighting so bear with me I'll try to get through this section fast but it just always happens every time I show a fully black bag. It is my Prada nylon backpack. Again this is one that I had in high school. I had the real version. And then the trend went away of the Prada nylon because when I was in high school, it was like the biggest thing to have one of those Kate Spade mini nylon backpacks or the Prada. I went for the Prada and I used it to death. This is a bag you can beat up. It's fantastic, so great. And I really used backpacks a lot back then. I mean, when you're in school, you, you do. It just makes sense. You're used to carrying your books in them. So even if you have a handbag version, it feels natural to carry it. After high school, I think I kept it in college for a bit. And I wasn't really using it. So my mom always really liked the bag. I gave it to her and then the trend came back and then she didn't want to give it back to me, which is totally fine because I did give it to her. So... But I was cheeky and I did ask, could I have it back? And she said no, which I had to respect. So I found one at Bister Village Outlet. And this one has the gold hardware. Mine had silver. Because when this re-released, it was for $1,000. And I was like, uh, no, I'm not paying that. Because I think I paid like 200 for mine pre-loved back in the day. And I was not doing, you know, $1,000 for the same bag. And I knew I wouldn't use it as much as I did back then. This was just something that I wanted to have in my collection because of the memories I had. And this is why I say, like, don't be fast to get rid of bags. Like, really think about it for a long time because styles do come back. And, you know, your lifestyle might change. So you have to kind of think about those things. I know that, you know, one day if I have kids, I will use this because you can throw it over your shoulder, it's indestructible, it's wipe off mess free. So it's one of those that I'm not using a lot right now. I rarely ever use it unless I'm taking it like traveling with me. And even then I'm usually dressed in such bright colors that I bring bags that match my color palette. But I suspect one day I will so I keep it around in my collection. The seventh bag on my list is my Jacquemus Le Chiquito. I knew when I bought it I wanted to get the pink one and I did and I got it on sale through Shopbop. They do these amazing sales where it's like just big huge codes off and the more you spend the more you save. So I ended up getting like 25% off on this and it was like a current collection. I'm glad that I didn't pay full price because I've used this twice and look at the handle. Like, I don't know if it's going to come across on camera, but there's like watermarks and stains. That happened the first time I used it. And look how scratched up the leather looks. And I'm not super rough with my bags. This one just, here's the back of it. It just scratches so easily. 
I don't think it's a bag that necessarily looks better as it gets scratches. Like Chloe is a brand that I love as it gets scratches and wear marks. It just looks better because of the design of the bag. Every time I go to possibly wear this, there's another pink bag in my collection that's in a better condition that I end up wearing instead of this. I don't know if I should keep it around just as like a little piece of fashion history. It had such a big moment. I just don't see myself really using this. Like it's also not practical enough that it ever makes the cut for a trip where, you know, I usually like to have a teeny evening bag. It's one of those that I feel is so iconic because of the moment it had on social media, but maybe it's just not me like maybe it's too trendy and fits too much of a different style that I probably should just get rid of it I don't know like what do you think should I just get rid of it already or should I keep it and keep trying to style it eighth bag on my list might come as like a little bit of a surprise and that is my Bulgari serpent tea bag for this size of bag I do get good use out of it but for me I'm leaning more towards medium to everyday sized bags this one is great because it does have card holders inside, so versus like a Chanel Mini, I do kind of see more purpose in this, plus the price point's much better anyways. But for my wardrobe, I think if I would have been able to locate the top handle version that's like a little bit bigger, I think that would have been much more practical and I would have gotten more use out of it. So I definitely think my next Bulgari bag will be the top handle style or the shoulder bag style because I do love their bags and love their quality and when I use it I really enjoy it and it just looks so stunning like a piece of jewelry on your body but I don't regret having this one in my collection. From the perspective of me being more afraid of smooth leather that's not the reason why I don't get as much use out of this as I would like to. It's more so just that I think the size needs to be the bigger size next time. The ninth bag on my list is my Dior saddlebag. I've had this for a few years now, it was when they were re-releasing this in the new leather versions, that first collection they dropped. Around the same time I bought my vintage one, and the thing about it is, the shape is just so inconvenient. Like, I don't know why this took off. I mean, I know why. They did a huge marketing campaign and everyone ate it up, and it does have great fashion history. It was featured on Sex and the City, and that is how I know of the bag, and I know how famous this bag was, and I've always wanted to have one in my collection. But I just would not pay, what are they, like $4,000 for this size? There's just no way. And for me, it doesn't add up because maybe back then it made sense because you weren't carrying around these big, huge phones like we have today that are like almost the size of tablets in your hand. This hardly fits the phone plus the essentials like a small wallet and, you know, maybe some sunglasses in a soft case, but it's not your everyday bag even this back pocket it's sloped so this part up here is so tiny that you can really just say that, like this part is the back pocket and what you can fit in here like yes you can fit your phone where it sticks out but it doesn't feel that secure to me so I don't often do that whenever I use this I don't find it to be an enjoyable experience but I don't think I'll ever get rid of this bag just because it is a part of fashion history that I do want to have. The 10th bag on my list will come at no surprise because I've talked about this quite a few times before and it's my Valentino Mini Rock Stud Tote. I love this design. It's so fun. I will always have it in my collection but I don't know why I don't use this because it's a great everyday size. It fits a lot more than you think it would. Like your mini pochette, your phone, your sunglasses in a soft case, like all the essentials can fit here and even a, a small water bottle inside sticking out if you really need one. So it's a great bag. I just don't know why I don't use it enough. I think it might be the case that, you know, my style goes in cycles. Sometimes I'm into more pastel, lighter colors, and sometimes I'm into more like bold, bright, vibrant colors. And the bold, bright, vibrant colors are coming back. I mean, Valentino just did a whole collection of just hot pink. And now that there are more clothing options in the stores and I'm buying a lot more bold colors again, I think I will get more use out of this. Not coupled with my efforts to wear this bag more this year, this might change and might be removed from this list, so let's see about that in the next year or so. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I think this is a great way to just really review a collection as well. It does have me thinking about a couple of these bags, if I really need to keep them or not. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and TikTok to see how I style my bags, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!